Hello, welcome to Everyday Living with Penny. My name is Penny Malone and I have Maggie Gillum here with me. She's a very creative person and uh, I went to school with her and her husband, Jed. And today she's going to show us how to do uh, fabric flowers and different uses, a lot of different uses. Looks like we've got some wreaths here and we've got a makeup bag and all kinds of stuff. So I'm gonna let her show you how to do different wreaths and um, flowers and leaves. Okay, I've brought a few, um, several um, materials here to show different types that you can make. Um, here's a little clippy, my little girl, and actually I have worn this in my hair. Um, I coordinated some fabrics to go with the dress that I had bought and uh, just clipped it to the side. So that is one use for the fabric flowers that I found that I use this a lot. Uh, it can also be attached to a headband. Um, right here is a, just a very simple yo-yo flower with a button attached in the middle and I'll be showing how to make this type of flower. Um, this one has put six petals on this. You can put as many as you want and make it fuller, but um, I'm going to also be showing how to make fabric flowers with the pointy, um, the pointy petals on them. And um, another way that this petal can be done is by um, doing a more rounded petal and I'll also be showing that. Um, there's a few others that um, you can play with material and uh, there's different varieties that you can do and I've made up a few <laughs> just uh, sitting there um, with the kids or watching TV. I'm not much of a TV person so this gives me something to do with my hands um, while the kids are watching or um, while people are doing their own hobbies around the house. So um, <clears throat> I'll first start with the yo-yo flower. Um, I just uh, use this as a broadcloth material and um, you can buy different templates to do perfect circles. Sometimes I don't even use a cup, but um, for the purpose of this, I just went to the cabinet and chose, um, I wanted it to be a larger one because the way they gather, you'll want to do that. You can make smaller ones or even make them larger than this, but um, I placed my cup on my fabric and I'll just uh, demonstrate that with some fabric that I have here. Um, folded it out and uh, depending on what scissors you're using you can uh, fold it and cut out several at a time. Um, I'll just take the end and show how I did one. I placed the cup on the fabric and then I took a pin and I just traced around it and, and then you have it um, just a line that you can cut around and you'll end up with this size right here is what I got from this cup and your needle and thread you'll take it sometimes I use a thicker thread it doesn't matter um, but just thread your needle and pull it through and just double knot it at the bottom this, since this is a thinner thread I'm gonna go up and then I'm gonna go up again and just knot it here. And for those of you that is not very crafty and don't think you could do this, you can also buy these on eBay for little or nothing. But you know, most people wanna do their own thing, but you can, uh, if you don't know how to or you don't have the time, you can get these pre-made. So there I have a knot to start with. That way if I, if I start doing a running stitch all the way around my circle like I'm going to do to form the yo-yo, um, that way I won't have to worry about getting halfway through and losing my thread. So now that I have my knot there, I'm just going to go down and up, down and up, all the way around your circle. Um, if you try to stay close to the edges of the circle, you'll end up with a with a nicer look, but um, I tend to do these pretty quickly and just go do that running stitch all the way around the flower, well, soon to be flower. After you get through a little bit, you may want to go ahead and pull it. I've got my thread cut pretty long here, so it might want to tangle. So you see how it's gathering there and you're left with this. After you've gathered it a little bit more, just continue with that running stitch.
When you pull those together, that'll hide some of the seams too, won't it? Yeah, and sometimes if I have a little extra, like I said, I, I tend to do these pretty quickly. I just keeps my hands busy. I can, um, if you see that maybe a lot of times, uh, like I said, I don't use a template, so um, I won't have a perfect circle. So you can use your scissors and just uh, make sure you don't get your stitch, but cut off any excess that you may have there that may make the center um, kind of sloppy. So um, you end up with this. You're like, well, that's not a flower. So um, just play with it a little bit and pull it. And you'll see how it's forming that. I've got a little extra thread that I'll just cut off there. But once you have it all gathered and you have played with it and gotten your flower the way that you want it to look, you'll just take your thread and place it through the center and secure it. I go up and down a few times to secure it there. And um, now if I weren't going to, um, if I weren't going to put any um, type of embellishment in the center, then I would just thread it back through to the back and I would knot it off. I'd kind of knot it maybe twice just to make sure that the flower stayed secure. But I'm gonna show you some of the different types of things that you can embellish with. Huh, I just threaded it the wrong way. So, you can put a button in the center. This one, since I did it pretty quickly, it's sort of sloppy. You'll use a bigger button and that'll cover that up. Uh, if you've taken your time and um, you want a little bit dressy of a flower, they sell um, just pearls at, um, these are just little plastic pearls at craft stores. I find a lot of the um, stuff I use for embellishments back in the jewelry aisle. Um, or there's buttons that you can purchase and I, I've picked up this little thing for a couple bucks and I, I did have them organized into colors <laughs> and uh, you see I um, do a lot of these and a lot of them just get thrown back in there and, and Gracie, my daughter, she likes to play with the buttons while I make these so she, <laughs> she gets to pick the buttons and helps me coordinate the different colors but um, you'll see there's some dressier buttons or you can buy a big bag of these um, this whole bag, um, even not on sale, is $4.99, so, and it was full and has a variety of different colors. So if you are going to add a button to the center, oh, and here's some others. You can give it a little bit of bling. And then these, these were on clearance, $1.79. You can add even more bling. So you'll just thread, I'll put a purple one on, that's what I grabbed, so you can just sew a button on like you would. And you really only have to thread it through a couple times um, just so it holds securely. If you aren't a sewing person and you're just done with it, you can hot glue your button. And so um, that's another option. I'm going to go ahead and set this one to the side. I didn't knot it off, but oh, it's a messy. It's a mess. <laughs> All right, and on this bag, this is a little cosmetic bag that um, I didn't make this. It was pre-made. Um, Hobby Lobby has a section of just tote bags and cosmetic bags. Um, all kinds of different things that you can add your own embellishments to and a lot of times they're 30% they're off or you can, there's a coupon each week online that um, you can get 40% off any one regular price item. So it ends up being a, a really nice gift for someone that you can personalize and, and um, so this one I just added some fabric flowers to. There's one of the yo-yo flowers like I just demonstrated but um, I am going to show you how to make one of these with the petals. Like this one? Yes, okay. like that one. Like and so again, just like the yo-yo, you will take your thread and just knot it off. Just knotted that one off once. And <clears throat> you'll start with your circle. This, like I said a while ago, you can um, cut out some circles a bunch at a time. And that's what I do with these since you'll be using, this one has six circles that you end up using. Um, 
<clears throat> I used this smaller cup and I just folded my fabric a few times, placed it on it, and I outlined around and I had this stack of circles. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's um, right side to right side or is there a certain way you have to keep your fabric? <clears throat> there he is. Um, I'm looking at this fabric. It's a thinner fabric, but one of the side it has polka dots. So one of the sides is printed a bit better. You can see that it's the right side of the fabric. So when you fold the fabric, you'll want to make sure <clears throat> that you keep the right side on the outside. You'll fold inwards and so the, the wrong side, <laughs> the back side of the fabric, will be hidden. So this I'm going to fold in half, fold in my circle in half, and I'm going to fold it again. So you'll be left with this. You'll hold it together as you do that first stitch. And what you'll be doing is you'll be stitching along the outside. I like to place this folded part over here where I start. That way it just holds it and I don't have to worry about it so much anymore coming undone. So just thread up and I'm going to come again in that same spot and I'm going to knot it off like I did on the yo-yo flower. So just like you stitched around the outside of the yo-yo flower, you'll stitch up and down until you get to the end. You want to go all the way to the end there and then just pull through. If you find that your string is getting tangled, don't just try to pull it through because you'll end up probably breaking your thread and, and it'll just, just be a to sloppy knot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've scrapped a lot of these. Um, so after you've done that stitch along there, see how your, your flower is starting to form. That is one of the petals that will be on your flower. And so you'll just leave that sitting there. You'll grab another circle and you'll do the same thing to it as you did for the first one. You'll fold it with the right side on the outside and then you'll fold it again. And I'm turning it around so I'll be making a stitch there first on the folded part and you'll go all the way around. So you don't have to make a knot on that one? No. And you'll just add it to your other petal. You see how your flower is coming together. On this same one, I'm going to show you how to make a different type of petal. Um, where these have pointy petals, I'm going to show you how to make one that has a more rounded petal. You'll do it the same way to begin with. You'll make that fold with the right side on the outside, except you won't fold again. You'll just fold it in half and that is all the folding that you'll have to do with this type of petal. And you'll do just like the other. You'll sew around the edge, the cut edge. That'll be your, your rounded side. And you can see I'm gonna pull this petal on down and you'll see that it's shaped differently. Um, we've got the pointy petals and then this one is more of a gathered rounded petal. I never do the, these um, different types of petal on the same flower, or I haven't. Um, depending on what type of finished look that you want, um, you may want to do that. But I generally stick with the same type of, of pattern for um, one flower. I'm going to just uh, demonstrate that again. Uh, fold it in half. Do a running stitch all the way around. and you'll pull that petal on there. Those are really cute. I love that. The reason I started making these is really by accident. I, <laughs> I love fabric and I had this big idea that I was going to sew. I was going to sew such beautiful things. <laughs> and I bought all this fabric up and I got home and I got so very frustrated with, um, with the pattern and, and um, I had all this fabric and then also it was it was like last season last spring all these cutesy little girl oh, clothes yeah. starts coming out with um, different types of embellishments on them and um, 
like I make cakes and so I said I went to the Culinary Institute of YouTube <laughs> and that's what I did with these flowers. I started looking up at different tutorials on how to make them and at least then I had a use for my fabric and right, I put right. my sewing projects to the side for a while. This is, well, I guess this is sewing, but it's not really what I call sewing. <laughs> this, this is very, very simple. <laughs> I don't have the attention span for a very long project I right don't now. Either. <laughs> so anyhow, while we've talked, I have added more petals and, and it's kind of gotten around there. I've, yeah, this one's got six like that one. I've made them with five and they look, they look pretty full. But I've gotten to the end, and that first petal that you started with, you're just going to attach with some stitches. And you're going to pull. And you see how that, and you'll have to stitch some more times to attach it really well. But that does gather your flower up. And I like to stitch across, going just down through the fabric. Give it a little more structure. Yeah, if, if you just kind of crisscross it, like basically pretend like you're sewing a button on there and it pulls the petals in and, and brings them closer together. That way, if you aren't adding a big button to the center or um, something that's gonna hide all the, um, that raw edge, then you can add some smaller beads and it'll have a nice clean finish. But there is how to make this type of flower. Um, just like this, if you wanted to add that button, um, you can and you would just come back up with your thread and grab whatever button that you would want to embellish with and add it button. to the center. Or or mm, you handy can. Handy dandy. Yeah, and I've cheated before too. This is, this is what I do because I like to have it I like the um, the buttons to have that thread going through like it's you know mm -hmm. been very carefully sewn on, but sometimes I just do one stitch through there, come through the other buttonhole, do another stitch, and come to the back and knot it off. Well, if I was going to be doing um, a headband or a clippy, um, that might get a lot of use and beat up a bit. And I know that one stitch isn't going to hold that button very well. So that's where the hot glue comes in. So you get the look of the stitch. And just be careful not to add much hot glue at all behind that button because once you press it down to secure it, it'll come out on the sides and you'll be making another flower. Yeah. So, And if you have any thread that is coming out, you can just snip that off. This flower didn't know what kind of flower it wanted to be. <laughs> it's got pointy petals, it's, it's got fabric. rounded <laughs> petals. So, um, but that's how you can make that sort of flower. Um, I've had lots of t-shirts that have gotten ruined, whether it's a bleach spot or a stain, and um, they're basically trash. And for a long time, that's where they went, is in the trash. But one thing that you can do is use the fabric from those t-shirts. So I'm going to show you um, how to make a no-sew fabric, a no-sew fabric flower. Um, this appeals to a lot of people that just don't want to sew or, or just aren't very comfortable with it. But um, so this wreath right here, it's kind of beat up. It's been on my front door with the sun beaming on it. And, um, you can purchase these wooden letters and you just use some craft paint or spray paint and uh, spray them and you can attach it to your wreath to finish it off. But this wreath is done in the no-sew fabric flowers. And they're very simple. They're actually my least favorite kind to do. Um, not because they're simple, that certainly wouldn't be the reason. <laughs> but just cut a circle, it does not have to be perfect. Chances are you're gonna be trimming it off anyhow. You can also use felt, which makes it a little bit easier, but I like to use the same fabric that I'm using to make my flower. Um, just because if it does show through a bit, it's the same color and it, nobody will know. <laughs> so um, I just cut a long strip of the t-shirt. And one thing that you can use other, other kinds of fabrics and uh, you'll see that they'll fray. Um, I did, and 
you know, I wanted that one to be kind of shabby chic. chic. So, so, or you can use some shearing scissors and that'll keep it from fraying so much and give a different look to it. But you can use, like this is a broad cloth. This is a thicker, thicker, cloth yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you can use that too. But I love the t-shirt material because it doesn't fray and it just kind of, it starts to roll up anyway, so it gives a nice finished look. A little character. <laughs> There's some tutorials that will tell you to cut a certain length. Um, I tend to not follow directions very well, <laughs> so I just I just cut a strip, and I'm like, oh yeah, that might be that might be good. And you see, I've got some that are um, bigger and some that are smaller, and it just gives um, it just gives a little bit of variety to your wreath anyway. So take your long strip or your short strip, and you will just knot it off, just a single knot there at the end. And I try to pull it just as close as I can so it's less I'm cutting off. But you're just gonna knot, and that's gonna be the center of your no-sew fabric flower. I'm gonna cut that off. You can leave it, it really doesn't matter, but that gives kind of a little rosette look anyway once you have cut it off. Put a little hot glue in the center of your circle. Just a dot is fine. And that's where you're gonna place this knot. The reason it is my least favorite one is if you do use hot glue, you end up burning your fingers quite a bit if you're like me. You could be more careful probably and not have as much damage, but well, you can see I've been baking and <laughs> <laughs> little accident prone. Now, if you did use felt, it wouldn't be folded up like this, but to make these flowers, all it is is a twist. You're just gonna twist this fabric and you're going to go in a circular motion all the way around. Now, you'll want to hot glue as you go, probably more frequently than I do. But I try to just hold it on there just as long as I can so it's less often I have to stop and pick up the hot glue gun. So I'm gonna go around a few times. Of course, I've went for a while and been too lazy to grab my hot glue gun and I've lost the majority of the flower. So just put some hot glue there behind it. And if you do get hot glue on the outside of this, if you press it down and it comes out the edge, just make your flower a little bigger. Wrap it around again. You can see how that's starting to finish. Right there, it's forming one of those little rosettes. And so, let's say this is as big as I want to make it. I'm going to make sure that what I have twisted has some glue holding it to that circle on the back. Press that on there. And I'm gonna cut this excess off. You can use that excess to make another flower. But you have all this circle left. So just kind of trim around the edge of it. Hold your scissors correctly. <laughs> Then you may want to add a little bit more hot glue and, and um, form it the way you want to, but you can see how that has made a tiny, one of these smaller ones. And these don't have to be put on a wreath. They can be used as an embellishment on clothing or cosmetic bags or Your clippies. be made into a clippy. Yes, let me show you these clippies. Um, you can purchase these at craft stores. I don't. Um, I have just out of convenience before, but if you go to Sally's Beauty Supply, they have a big box of these and they're available in two different types. There are these that are double pronged that you can use. I think these hold a little bit better, but sometimes you may be using, um, you may be making something that won't cover that and you'll want to cover this where it'll clip in your hair or wherever. You'll, um, so. There's these that have the single prong, and you can get, these come with a hundred clips, and it's, 
it's less than six dollars i forget the exact price but it's around six dollars for a hundred clips so that's a lot of them that you can make so pretty much any beauty supply store then yeah if it's at yeah size. yeah Think locally, that's the only place yeah. I really found. Uh, they're also available on, on the internet. You can order them. And um, let's see, you can use, oh, this is another thing that I've done with these. Um, I make special occasion cakes. So um, a lot of people say, well, I have trouble making a single layer um, box cake or something. This is something that you can do to jazz up your own cakes. Um, just do, just do a, a cake, um, one tier cake, and you can purchase these little sticks. You can use um, Wilton um, has the little sticks that they mm -hmm. use for um, mm -hmm. the cake pops and, and um lollipops and stuff. You, just any sort of stick you can use. Uh, these were $3.47 at a craft store um, and came with a whole lot of them. So you can attach these to a clippy or yeah let's say there's one flower on this one. You can attach it to this craft stick. You have your cake, stick these in the top and you've decorated a cake without having to mess with, with any, um, anything in the kitchen really. And so it gives a really cute look. It's cute. For the wreaths, I've had um, some people say, well, I don't even know what colors to use. Or they'll know one color that they want to use and just say that they can't coordinate different colors to go together. Here's how you can cheat. <laughs> um, I've actually been uh, decorating our home and um, there's color palettes available in the paint section at, um, at stores, um, at different home supply stores like this is from Lowe's, Home Depot has them too. And you can just go to the paint section and take a look and um, flip through and like I love this this like duck egg blue color and so if I wanted to make a wreath that would coordinate with those instead of choosing the colors of the fabrics myself I could cheat a little bit and choose some colors that some professional has chosen for me. and go to the fabric store and try to find your matches. Um, so here's small some enough others. to fit in your pocketbook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so nice. um, I've taken, where I use these colors, I've taken this with me <laughs> to, to find other different like frames and different accessories that will mm -hmm. match without having to take stuff from my home. So um, that's one way you can find some good coordinates um, to use. Um, let me show you this, this dress I ordered from a very talented lady on, on Etsy. Let me hold it for you. And uh, I love these little apron dresses and she has um, these little pants. And I've seen these on a lot of little girls lately and I, oh, yeah. I love to dress my girl up in them. So what I did was ask her, and you may know someone that sews quite a bit, um, sews larger projects. Um, Ask them for their fabric scraps. A lot of times they'll go in the trash or they've collected so many um, that they're ready to get rid of some. So you may not necessarily have to go to the fabric store and, and purchase you know, a, a yard of fabric or anything to, to begin these flowers. You may just want to, um, to ask someone for their scraps. And that's what I did with this lady that had made this dress. I said, when you finish that dress, could you send me some of your fabric scraps so that I could make some fabric flower headbands to go to go with it, and that's what she did. She sent me these um, these fabrics that I didn't I didn't have access to these fabrics, and so she just gave me her scraps so I could match up a headband to match exactly. And so that's um, one way you can do it to coordinate with clothing. Um, I've got some things down here. This gives some ideas on how to use different types of fabric, uh, to different types of things to um, this is a top that I got a while ago from Maurice's. And like I said, that was in the fabric flowers. I was seeing them everywhere on tops and, and bags. And um, they've, they had them attached to the top of his shirt. So if you made some fabric flowers, um, that would be one idea that you could um, use to dress up a, a more inexpensive um, shirt. These were a dollar. And so the little ones can be um, dressed up with some 
fabric flowers and, and dress these onesies up a little bit. These were at the Dollar Tree oh. for a dollar. So I tucked those away and I plan to do something with them. This is a project that I, have, that I haven't finished yet. I'm sewing this for Gracie. And it's just a very simple skirt. And I'm going to take some of the coordinating fabrics, you can see, um, and I'm going to put on some different flowers. Um, just to, yeah, just to dress cute. it up a little bit. And I, after I sew it to her skirt, I'll probably put, just buy, because um, I, I can do skirts not so great with tops. And so I'll probably just buy a solid top from a local, sh a, a local store, um, Walmart Old Navy, that sells a lot of plain tops and attach them, maybe one, two up near the neck and then make a fabric flower headband and she will have a whole coordinating outfit. And um, I would have spent just less than $10. So <laughs> that's, <of> 50. <laughs> I always like that. <laughs> and, and another thing, they've got um, these fabric flowers. They've got shoes available now for little, um, little girls that have a place to where you can clip in these onto the tops of the shoes. And so you can make, Two, just do exactly so have the same. Several pairs of shoes with just one pair of yeah, shoes. Yeah, yeah. I like I'm that all too. about saving some money. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> all right. So this one is a bit dressier. Um, you'll see a lot of headbands with um, with these. Um, I know a lot of little girls are into pageants and um, and Gracie just loves to dress up. So <laughs> so I, I utilize some of that bling and some of the more satin material. And this one, um, I won't demonstrate this one. It's a lot of little circle cuts. Don't even bother to use a template because they look better if they're not perfect. And just make some little ones. Natural. And mm -hmm. they graduate to a bigger. And you can make these just as full as you want. Um, but the satin material, I've got some over here to the side. Um, See, it'll tend to fray on the edges, but this is a raw edge. What you would do is you would just take, um, sometimes I light a candle, um, or I'll take, a, um, I'll take a lighter and just real quickly go around the edges and they'll curl up. So all of those, and then you'll just do one stitch pretty much in the center after you've stacked those. And you'll have a flower like this where the edges kind of curl up there and, and then you can add whatever embellishment you want to the center. And keep them from fraying. Yeah. yeah. Which some people do like the fray on them. Uh, it just depends on what kind of project you're working on. Um, depending on, you know, if you want the more shabby chic look or if you want a more finished look, just stack those and and the, um, it melts the edges of that set, satin a bit so it finishes them off. Um, if you do see that they are starting to fray, then you can just um, take a quick swap through there and um, or send it through the candle. One thing bad about um, using a candle sometimes how they'll start to smoke a little bit. Um, it may disco discolor. Um, actually, the this lighter one. fabrics. Yes, yeah. yes. This white fabric was a little more difficult to do. I wanted it to curl up more, but um, it was starting to get so much heat that the ends were getting a little singed. Now, um, I've taken you through how to make a yo-yo flower and then the flower with a rounded petal or with a pointy petal, showing you some of the different things that you can do with them as far as embellishing them with that and you can have fun with that that's one of the things I love there's so many options I'm the most indecisive person ever <laughs> and so you can find something on sale or just go and browse I love looking at this is in, was in the jewelry section um, love looking at the different options and just kind of stockpiling it and uh, finally getting a chance to sit down maybe after the kids have gone to bed and and um and do some just of these. Just kind of all falls together. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and one thing I love about where the dress I'd shown you, she had sent coordinates. And at the fabric store, you can find a lot of these coordinates and a lot of the really nice uh, designer fabrics will have coordinate collections. And that kind of saves the trouble of having to coordinate your own stuff. But um, 
making several fabric flowers and putting those all together um, makes a really nice look to do different accessories. So I really love um, collecting the different coordinating fabrics and doing stuff with those. Well, we'll take a break right quick and then we'll be back. Egan Construction in Gate City is a fully licensed electrical, industrial, commercial, and residential contractor whose services include maintenance on home or corporate offices, custom-designed kitchen renovations, demolitions, insurance restorations due to water dryouts, wind damage, or fire, licensed interior designing and architectural drawings, full excavations. They're licensed in Virginia and Tennessee. That's Egan Construction, 345 Water Street in Gate City. Well, welcome back from the break. Uh, she's going to show us how to make these flowers right here. And I think that's going to be the last thing for the show, right? Okay, so we're going to make one more flower for you. We've got um, this flower. I use pinking shears to go um, to cut the edges. You don't have to do that. Um, just like I said, the pinking shears keeps it from frying so much. So if you did have some, someone who had some of those, or if you have some yourself, you may want to do that because I love the, the little rickrack look it gives um, to the edges. But for the purpose of this, I'm just going to show you um, with this raw edge that's kind of fraying a bit. Uh, the long strips, I just I did not measure. You could if you're if you're more particular than I am, you could uh, measure and make sure that um, it's one or two inches all the way all the way down. You want uh, two strips of fabric that are the same length. So that's one that's a little bit thicker and then I've got one the same length that I cut a bit thinner. And one thing I like about this flower is though it looks like it has, well it does have two layers, but you're not having to make two individual flowers. What I do is I line up the end, I'll show you like this, I line up the end with the thicker fabric on the bottom and the thinner one on top and I make sure that one of the edges lines up. Now as you're sewing you'll kind of have to line it up again but make sure that you start and they're in the same spot. You may want to just snip it off there at the end to make sure it's together and that's where you're going to start sewing is where you know it's Penny do you care oh. to send some thread through that needle? What you need? Um, more? That's plenty. Yeah. So this one it will be lined up and what, as she's threading that, I'll show you that you'll just stitch up like you did the other flowers and you'll begin just to go all the way down, keeping those edges together, doing that running stitch up and down. So. Okay. Thank you. I've got them lined up, and so I'm going to stitch up. Now, especially on this one, you'll want to knot off on the bottom because if you get halfway through this big, long strip of fabric and you lose your thread, start all over. speaking from experience, <laughs> you will be frustrated. So I've got my knot, so I know I'm not going to lose my thread. Now, if you pull too hard, you'll break it, so um, just go down and up keeping those sides together as much as you can down and up kind of like doing the yo-yo right? yes okay. instead of stitching around a circle you're just stitching down this long strip and where it's two pieces of fabric it'll want to get pretty thick so you'll want to pull through and gather it up and then just start stitching up and down again wherever you left off so probably what about every inch or two? A little bit closer than that, and really, um, the closer. Well, I mean, uh, pull it through. Oh yeah, yeah, every yeah. inch or two that way. Your stitches, as far as the length of your stitches, you're not making quilts, so right. <laughs> nobody's gonna see these stitches. Right. <laughs> and so pull through. Oh, 
and you'll sorry. see how it's forming yes. that flower and you'll I probably cut this fabric longer and I tend to do that just to make sure that I can play with the flower to get it the size that I want so just keep stitching through you gather it up after about an inch, inch and a half or so. Watch that thread, I don't want to knot up. And I am going to do just a bit more and then I'll show you how to finish off this flower. If you get really crafty, you could probably use three or four yeah. strips of um, fabric to make a bigger flower with lots of petals. Even yeah, coordinating fabrics uh -huh. too. And if you want to do that, just make sure you may want to just, um, when it starts to gather up there, since it will be thicker with more layers, mm -hmm. you'll want to, to make sure that you gather it up and, and start a new. Right. Again, because it does want to not. All right, so I've ended my stitch. I haven't cut off the thread. Do not cut off the thread yet but just cut off your fabric just a little bit past your stitch. See right there, I've got that excess, and I'm gonna just stitch through one more time to the very edge of that. And so you just have this, you can see it's not attached yet, it's just gathered up there. And so I'm going to, like we did on the petaled flowers, we're just going to gather it to that side that you started with. You're just going to do a stitch there to make it join and pull it together. And then like the other flowers, you'll stitch through there in the center, kind of crisscrossing it um, just as close to the edge as you can, but it's a little more difficult to get through all those layers where it's gathered up and you'll pull through. A thimble comes in handy with these. Yeah. Um, just to push it through. Um, where I have a work table, and a lot of times I'll set it on my work table, and, <laughs> and I'll push it through like that. And pull through, but thimble would be best. So I've gathered it and secured it a bit more. And you're at the point now to where you can add any sort of embellishment. Um, I love to add different pearls to the center and um, so I just put one pearl through. I'll demonstrate that. Or you can do beading, just make sure your needle is thin enough um, to get the beads on. So put a pearl on and stitch through. You basically place them anywhere you want to, can't you? Yeah. I didn't put that one right in the center since I plan on adding more. Um, sent that back through. And then put another on. <coughs> and you can just add as many as you want and um, then after you've added all the pearls or, or beads that you would like, you'll knot it off at the back. I'm going to show um, how to attach these. If you do want to make one of the clippies, I'm going to show you the best way that I've found. Um, someone may have another method that they use, but I like this um, to attach these flowers to a clippy. I'll take my clippy, and I've got this little scrap fabric. I'm going to open the clippy and pinch it on there. Now that you've done that, you'll just take some hot glue. My poor hot glue gun, it's seen better days. <laughs> <laughs> and put some glue, and before it dries, just set your fabric flower on top. Position it so that you're not showing the clip and mash down a bit. Being careful. <laughs> or you'll have blisters on your fingers. 
And so we've attached a clip and you'll see that um, little piece of fabric that you used kept your clip from hot gluing together. And so you can open and close it with no problem. So that's how to attach it to a clippy. Another idea is um, they sell just like a little pin that you would use for a brooch. You can find that in the jewelry section mm -hmm. of a craft store. And so I've seen people wear a scarf and um, attach it to their scarf. Or if they have a jacket, to use that. Um, another idea is fabric flower corsages. I've done a wedding before to where um, the boutonnieres and and the corsages were all fabric flowers. So that's one way that you can use these. And um, it's and I attached it to um, a key, not a real. It was in the. It was a like a vintage key. I attached it to it. They have. Um, like a skeleton key. Yeah, oh, okay. they have they have those. Um, also in the jewelry section. Another thing I've done is I have attached it to um, a skeleton key, um, like a vintage key. Um, they have some of these that you can get. I've seen them, I know, at Hobby Lobby. I'm sure other craft stores have them in the jewelry section. But attach it to that, and I made a boutonniere um, out of a different type of flower, and they use that in the wedding. That's cute. So you can find... Um, you can actually attach them to a stem if you wanted it on that. So you can find different ways to use these, and it's kind of limitless. <laughs> um, I keep finding more things, and it's just a fun way to play with different types of fabric and gives me an excuse to go to the, to the fabric <laughs> store. So <laughs> I used to work where a fabric store was on my way home, yeah. and um, I'd get a call from my husband. <laughs> where are you? I'll be home in a minute. <laughs> Where are you? I'll be home in a minute. Just, just you're at the fabric store, aren't you? <laughs> so I'm a bit of a fabric junkie. So um, this is a way to use just all different kinds, and you can you don't have to buy a yard of fabric. When I first started buying fabric, I, I really didn't know like that I could just get a small strip of it. <laughs> and with a lot of these, that's all you need. And so um, an eighth of a yard, I, I was maybe. buying tons. I, I was buying tons of fabric just to do a few flowers. <laughs> and so just have them cut off a small piece, and and they'll probably ask you, what are you making? <laughs> And, uh, but, but yeah, that's a way just to kind of experiment with different fabrics that you like and make some nice accessories to go with outfits or, or other things that you have. Well, I want to thank Maggie for being here. She has done a wonderful job in showing us uh, new ways to do fabric flowers and new wreaths and uh, doing uh, kids' clothes and just all kinds of stuff, new shoes. Using one pair of shoe, mind you. <laughs> so, uh, but um, I want to thank you all for joining me. And um, Maggie does have a, a Facebook page. And what is? Yeah, if you'd like to visit my Facebook page, I pretty much, um, well, I make lots of stuff. It's facebook.com uh, slash made by Maggie, M A G G I E. And um, <clears throat> I really do that as a way to share share my work and I, I love sharing my work with other people or I work, play, whatever it is. <laughs> but um, I, I do um, cakes and little girl stuff, clothes and clippies and accessories. Basically, um, I'll never forget in high school, someone um, came to speak to us and was, or it was an, and there was an article talking about pals success. You know, we've got pals right, here and right, right. um so one of the ways they kept their business so successful is that they kept a small menu. I told my husband, I said, I'm like the purple cow. <laughs> purple cow of all things crafty because yeah. I just, there's nothing that and I see. And for those of you don't that make. don't know what the purple cow is, they <laughs> have a menu that is so big, it takes up a whole billboard on the side. And you would have to sit there literally probably 20 minutes to read every single thing. So. Definitely, Maggie is the most creative person. So if you're planning a wedding, and I, and I just like to talk <laughs> ideas too. So if you're looking for mm -hmm. some inspiration and, and or maybe some help um, creating some custom items, then I would love to do that. So, well, I'd like to thank our sponsors at the Egan Home Center and uh, just us girls on uh, West Jackson Street. Uh, we've had a great time today, and if you'd like to see this episode later on, you can find it at www.youtube.com forward slash user forward slash everyday with Penny. Thank you, and have a great day.
Egan Construction in Gate City is a fully licensed electrical, industrial, commercial, and residential contractor whose services include maintenance on home or corporate offices, custom-designed kitchen renovations, demolitions, insurance restorations due to water dryouts, wind damage, or fire, licensed interior designing and architectural drawings, full excavations. They're licensed in Virginia and Tennessee. That's Egan Construction, 345 Water Street in Gate City.